My name is Elena Johnson, and this video was created by the Department of Instructional Technology for Norfolk Public Schools. In this video, you will learn about Zoom. By the end of this video, you will be able to log in, create, and share a Zoom meeting. Zoom is the platform that Norfolk Public Schools will use to conduct synchronous instruction. Synchronous is the live, real-time presentation of lessons. It's as if you are in the classroom with your students. We can also use Zoom to create asynchronous lessons by recording ahead of time. That is discussed in level two Zoom training. Everyone is required to be able to Zoom with their students. There are different ways that you can Zoom. Zoom works on your phone, computer, and laptop, an iPad, or a tablet. This video will focus on the laptop and computer desktop version of Zoom, and I will be using the internet to access my Zoom account. Anyone can join in a Zoom meeting by clicking the link or entering the meeting ID and password. Not everyone has a Zoom account necessarily. You as an employee of Norfolk Public Schools do have a Zoom account that is set up with your credentials. I'm going to show you how to get to it on the web. While conducting Zoom lessons, it is important to consider some best practices. The first is teachers are encouraged to have a co-host for several reasons. Co-hosts can collaborate, help supervise breakout rooms, aid with technical support, and monitor student chat and nonverbal feedback. I will be explaining some of these features later in the presentation. Another best practice is that students are encouraged to use the nonverbal features similar to a classroom setting to avoid interruptions, and teachers are encouraged to unmute students for verbal responses. A third best practice is to use a waiting room. This gives the host and co-host control of who enters their classroom. And the fourth best practice is to sign into two devices. Your smartphone can keep you in the session if your internet con connection fails. So as with everything on the internet, there is more than one way to get there. This video will focus on just one way, so there is less confusion, but know that if you are on a Chromebook or tablet accessing Zoom through an application, you can still get to Zoom. Again, your interface may look and act differently. Using the Norfolk Public Schools homepage, I can access Zoom through the staff portal. This will take me to the next screen where I want to click on Zoom conferencing. There is also Zoom 411 that has great resources about Zoom. Once I click the Zoom conferencing, I have three options, join, host, or sign in. Clicking join will give me the option to enter a meeting ID or, and password. Clicking host will start a meeting right away without giving me the option to schedule it for a later time. So I click on the sign in button. And I will be asked to use my NPS credentials. That is my email. And my password. And this lands me on my profile page. So how do I schedule a meeting on my profile page, you will see in the upper right hand corner, three options, schedule a meeting, join a meeting, host a meeting. If I click host a meeting, that meeting will start right away. I want to plan my meeting, so I'm going to click on schedule a meeting. On the left hand side, you can see a list of tabs. Once I've clicked schedule a meeting, it drops me down to the meetings tab. Here's where I will create my meeting. I will name my meeting. I will select the date and the time I want my meeting to begin. Make sure I have the correct AM or PM and how long the meeting will last. It can last longer than the allotted time. This is just what the participants will see when I share my meeting information with them. It's for planning purposes. 
meeting ID. I, wa I always want the system to generate that automatically. Security. NPS has safety features in place, so I must have a password, but I do have the option to edit my password. Scrolling down the page, I have video and audio options. I want the host ha to have their video on and the participant to have it off. The audio should be for both. In meeting options, I want to mute participants upon entry. So I click that. Alternative host. Alternative host is someone who can start the meeting if you're not able to. I can assign co-hosts during a meeting but an alternative host has that extra ability to start a meeting. And once I'm finished, I click save. And there's my meeting in my meetings tab. So how do I share my meeting? So I'm going to find my meeting. I'm going to click on it. And I can, at this point, I can start my meeting or I can share my meeting. So I'm going to use this copy invitation link. This pop-up window appears. Once I copy meeting invitation, it will go on my clipboard, copy to, copied to clipboard. Then I can open an email and paste that information. If you notice, the address for the link is not active. By person, by by placing my cursor at the end of that HTTPS address and adding a space, I make it live or active, also known as a hyperlink. Now my invitation is ready to share once I address my email. This can also be posted to your, uh, to your learning system management learning management system. So, so once I have, start, have posted or shared my meeting, then I'm ready to start and conduct my meeting at the designated time. So I go back to my Zoom account and click meetings, find the meeting I want to start and click it. This is just an overview to, of the Zoom toolbar using a laptop or desktop computer. It appears at the bottom of my screen and may disappear if my mouse is not actively hovering over it. You will need to practice with these tools once you are the host of your own meeting. As a participant, you have some of the same capabilities, but only a host or co-host can control the security. As the host or co-host, you also have control over the group chat and its, and its features and whether participants may unmute or rename themselves. When I have finished my meeting, I do want to end the meeting. If I simply leave the meeting, the participants are left alone in, and Zoom will assign a new host. It's as if I left my classroom unattended. So I want to make sure I end the meeting for all. Here again are some Zoom best practices that I encourage you to use. Having a co-host can help make your session less stressful and is a great way to collaborate with other teachers. Having students use the nonverbal features mimics how you may have managed your physical classroom. The waiting room gives you control over who enters and using two devices can alleviate some technical difficulties. Thank you for watching, and I hope this helps you understand the basics of how to log in, create, and share a Zoom session. If you need additional support, please contact your ITRT.